fun, perfect directions. If your directions aren't flawless, I wouldn't get in a car with someone who wasn't 100% sure they knew exactly where they were going. I mean, if you're going in a carpool, want, make one person the directions person, and they give everyone the same directions, and there's a cell phone in every car. Yep, and Two. make that person responsible. So if, the, if anyone gets lost, well... Make sure you know who to blame when things go wrong. If the, yep. per, if the directions are bad, make sure you give that person what for. Because when we plan conventions, I mean, I guess part of the reason we have such success and a lot of our friends have had trouble is that we actually sit down and plan, you know, pen and paper, specifically, like, uh, duties are assigned and responsibilities and blames are laid. Mm -hmm. Like, we have a thing we always say, like, like Scott says he's going to do something. I say, all right, Scott, that's all you. Mm-hmm. We're serious about that. That means whatever consequences come of Scott's action, they are his to deal with and his to take blame for. It's basically like, all right, you can try that crazy thing, but I don't have confidence in it, so you're taking full responsibility if you want to go for it. That's what all you means. Yep. So, so when someone says all you, you know, that a lot of times you're just dissuaded from even doing it at all. Yep. Of course, now, it's great when you do it and it works and the other person just... <laughs> <laughs> now, regarding that, I highly recommend that you don't try to caravan a bunch of cars together. That's a very, very bad idea. Now, there are a number of reasons for that. One, I have an anecdote that is fairly detailed and gives you a good picture of exactly what can go wrong. I think, but, I think telling the anecdote actually just gives all the stuff we want to say. Yeah. So, basically, we were going to uh, Otakon. It was the first Otakon we went to? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the first one. And this con, like, we have, because the hotel screwed up, and all, it was just a disaster from the start. But we, we were going to drive on our own. We, everyone, had, everyone was going to meet us at the hotel room that we all had, and we decided that, all right, we'll all go on our own. But a bunch of our friends said, no, we should carpool together. It'll be fun. We'll stop on the road, and we'll hang out, and blah, 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 blah. So we agreed that, all right, fine, we're going to leave at X time. You can follow us if you want, but once again, I'll note that I speed. And when I say I speed, I speed. I mean, I quite literally go about 100 miles an hour in the left lane as fast as I can go down the entirety of a freeway. Now, you know, a lot of people, you know, whatever you want to say about speeding, we can talk about that in another podcast because we're going to put you down so fast. <laughs> you know? The point is, is that every minute you're saving by speeding going 100 miles an hour or more is another minute at the con. And I, the ticket is worth it. Especially, you know, it doesn't matter. Well, it, it. I mean, it really adds up. Because I used to drive a lot between Detroit and Rochester. And if I sped, I'd make it in about four hours. If I drove the speed limit, it took about seven hours. Three hours is, is, is worth a yeah, lot of my... especially when you're only going somewhere for a weekend. Yeah, definitely. So... So whatever. They say, all right, fine. We're, I said, all right, we're leaving at 6, 6 a.m. And they're like, all right, meet us at our house and then we'll go. So we show up at their house at 6 a.m. Ready to go. We expect them to get in their car and come with us. Mm -hmm. Not only are they not awake, but they have not packed. Great. That was awesome. So, we, you know, being reasonable people, we waited. And that was our first mistake. We should have cut loose immediately. We should have just said, oh, you're not ready. We thought you'd be ready at 6, and you're not. Well, see ya. See ya. Boom. That's what we should have done. Yep. Just remember this. Whenever there's a problem... You, unless you have a reason to help the person, like they're your good friend or you screwed up, or like it's your fault that they're, they're having a problem and not their own fault. Yep, yep, yep. But if, if it's their own fault and they're going to detract from the con, you really got to cut loose. Mm -hmm. So we waited, and they finally get all their stuff together, and then one of them decides to lead us to the freeway. Well, he didn't know how to get to the freeway and led us in the middle of nowhere. Great. Great. So I passed all of them, flashed my brights and my flashers, and follow me, and I took everyone to the freeway, and then we're going. So we're on the freeway. I get up to about 75, and one of them calls us. Slow down. Yeah, we're probably not going to slow down. Yeah. So we slowed down a little, but we kept inching up, and they eventually followed us around 75, even though I really wanted to be going about 100, but they wouldn't follow and whatever. So then, finally, we, we're, about, we're about an hour and a half on the road, and all of us have to pee. Mm -hmm. So we decide to stop and pee. Stopping and peeing is okay, but make it quick. Stop at the rest stop, go in, pee, get out. So while we're stopped and peeing, people in the other cars decide they want to stop at this little diner there and eat breakfast. It's not even like a diner that I would eat at ever. It was like a trucker diner. It was kind of scary. Yeah, but two, it's real important to remember that unless you really shouldn't stop on your way to a convention. 
because say unless you, you st- absolutely have to. Yeah, but I mean, don't stop and eat breakfast on the way because you're much better off getting to the con and then hanging out with a bunch of people and eating breakfast or lunch with them. Yeah, I mean, if you're really, if you're going early in the morning, which is what you're probably going to do because you're going to take the day off work, you pack the night before, you wake up at the crack of dawn. If you need food, eat a breakfast at home or go to a diner, like, right in your hometown. Then get in the car, get on the highway, and go, and do not stop until you get there. And then once you're there and you get into the hotel and all that nice stuff, then you can go eat and hang out with people. You know, it's a lot more fun than eating with people on the road in some crummy place. So the three cars are at this diner, and they all say they want to eat. So there are three of us in my car, and we all agree that, all right, we're cutting the rope. Goodbye, good luck, you have the directions. We get back on the road. Mm -hmm. They are all pissed at us. And you know what? That's fine. We ended up getting there. Three hours before them. Three hours. And you know what? Those were convention hours because it was a Friday, right? Yep. I mean, so we, we, we ended got... up getting three more hours of convention than they did. They pretty much didn't get any convention whatsoever on Friday. Because we got, at the, we got there at noon. We checked into the hotel, which is a whole other story because the hotel was almost a disaster. Yeah, we'll tell that story another time. Yes, but we check into the hotel, and then a bunch of our friends who are already in town call us, and we all got together and got like breakfast, lunch at a bagel place, and hung out and got our badges and had a good time for three hours. Mm-hmm. And then they showed up three hours later miserable and hungry and tired, and they'd missed the con, and they hadn't had their food yet, and they didn't have their badges or anything. And being illogical, they, well, blamed it on us. Yeah. Uh, don't blame your own failings on someone else. I mean, you know, while we might feel sorry for you that, you know, yeah, you didn't have a fun time, and that sucks, it's not our fault that you didn't have a fun time. It's your fault, and we're not going to let you drag us down, you know, yeah. This dragging down thing, I think we've, we've pretty much hammered it in. Yeah. If you don't get it by now, you're so not... many people. Yeah. I mean, we've got some friends who, when they hear this, are probably going to call in and be like, oh, this happened to me, blah, 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 and they'll tell you a story that's even worse than the ones we've been telling. Yeah, I've it's... heard stories about like, people going to cons with like people from school or with different groups. And We're the, talking like the fist fights in the rooms, uh, molestations, uh, money and food and jewelry being stolen... Uh, hotels not having the rooms because the person didn't actually get the reservations, uh, people getting lost and actually not making it to the con. Yeah, don't let anyone drag you down. I think I think we've we've hammered it in. That's pretty much the the primary uh, right. lesson here. The next thing is your hotel. Now, you're gonna wanna depending on where the con is and and how full it's gonna be, you have to get the hotel well enough in advance to make sure you actually get a room. Now for Otakon. Katsu, not so much Katsukon, but for Otakon, Anime Central, and uh, Anime Boston, and Nekocon, I'm not kidding when I say that six months in advance is probably the latest you want to think about this. Yeah. Now, you're, for a hotel, you're going to want to look at price. You're going to want to look at uh, proximity. proximity to the con. If it's far away from the con, it's probably not the greatest idea because you won't be able to easily walk back and forth in case you know you have you really have stuff that you need to move around or you suddenly need to change clothes or maybe you're a big cosplayer you want to change your costumes and stuff. Because I mean, a lot of people think that. Well, it depends on what kind of con it is too. Because some cons run twenty four seven, and some cons don't. Yep. And two, a lot of people use the logic of vacations where you pick the crappiest, cheapest hotel room because all you're going to do is sleep in it. Mm -hmm. But honestly, at cons, despite how much fun you're having, you're going to go back to the room more often than you think to just chill with people. Mm. And you really want the room to not be a cesspool. The other thing is, hotels will always tell you this room has an occupancy of blah. All right? Basically, while you can get in trouble for breaking that rule, lie to the hotel and tell them you have whatever the maximum occupancy is. So if it's a four-people room with a double bed, say you have four people. Just tell them that. Now, but bring as many people as you can fit in there comfortably and divide the price among you. Now, it really depends on the hotel. Like, the, the Renaissance Hotel in Baltimore, where we usually stay, I'm not kidding when I say that their normal room can comfortably sleep eight. Mm-hmm. And it can sleep ten if you're a little younger and a little sprier. Yep. And one big trick is that if you've got a lot of people, instead of getting a suite, get two rooms and ask for them to be adjoining. And you can open the little door between the two rooms. You wouldn't believe how much more space that actually ends up giving you. 
It's great. You can even get like three rooms adjoining. If That's what we slick. did for this coming Otacon. We have three rooms 